I saw a headline I posted to my website. You can access that seven days a week, olivetreeviews.org. And it read this, churches stand up now or be destroyed. And that, by the way, wasn't a sensational headline. It was just a very solid story based on facts that are going on in America. We had in early September, a woman arrested because she wouldn't give license to same-sex marriage. Jack Hibbs, let me just talk to you for just a minute, but I want to bring Amir into this discussion as well. But you're a pastor. We saw this woman be thrown in jail because of the same-sex issue and and things like that. We are in a post-constitutional time, a time of total lawlessness. And of course, that was predicted in the Bible as well. And gentlemen both would agree with me, the first victims of lawlessness and of the spirit of Antichrist seems to be Christians and Jews. Am I right? Listen, I think you're not only correct, but when we look at what's happening, Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 warned that as we got deeper into the last days, lawlessness would be an indicator. We're right now talking uh, on this phone conversation while police are being targeted randomly Mm -hmm. and people are being encouraged to target police. We've got the violence that's going on against the unborn. We have got, for example, you know, Amir was talking about going to Israel and how wonderful and safe it is. Uh, People ask me all the time, we just had 400 people show up for our Israel information meeting to go to Israel. They asked me the same question. Is it safe to go to Israel? And I say yes or no. It's not safe when you have to go from Chino Hills to Los Angeles. Right. But once you get from Los Angeles to Israel, it is safe. Why? Lawlessness. It's increasing. And the people who pay the price for lawlessness are actually the law-abiding people. They're the ones who pay the price. For example, you can remove guns from the culture. Who's going to have guns? Only the people who do not obey the law. So all the good people can surrender their guns, but bad people will never surrender their guns. So lawlessness is ramping up. The data shows that. But as a Christian, again, it's Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But the innocent pay the price when such times arise. But, Jack, where do you think this is going? I mean, all right, we've had one woman thrown in jail already. Okay, I believe she was released, but I mean, she set the pace here. Where do you see this going? Where do you see the criminalization of Christianity? going? Yeah, I see this post-faith nation of ours going in the direction where Christianity, the Bible, will somehow be categorized or looked at as being bigoted, maybe even possibly should be illegal, that the criminalization of Christianity is going to increase. We're going to be constantly more and more misunderstood. It's interesting to me, Jan, that if you are a liberal zealot, a a socialist, your views matter, Mm -hmm. and you can Mm -hmm. shout all you want. But if someone is conservative or traditional or biblical, we are the ones that are bigot and we're intolerant. I think you're going to see that increase more and more to the silencing, as it were, of the lamb. Okay. And Amir, you said to me off air, you said, and we talked a little bit about this last time you were on air with me, we can certainly reinforce it, that Israel is the test for the spiritual state of the church. That's one thing we probably haven't covered a great deal here in this particular hour, and that is how the church, and we talked a little bit about the church doesn't receive the message of eschatology, but define a little bit what you mean by Israel as the test for the spiritual state of the church. One, if you are anti-Israel, if you hate Israel, then you have a big problem because God loves Israel, and if, if you hate what which God loves, then most likely you would love that which God hates. Mm-hmm. The second thing is, the church was not only called to help and support Israel, but also to provoke Israel to jealousy. Yes. And and that's the other thing. There's those that don't think Israel, you know, has the right to be in the land and, and God has replaced them. But then there's those that, that actually suggest that Israel doesn't need Jesus and God has two different covenants and, right. and thus they don't need to share the gospel with the Jewish people. And these two are the big dangers. And so to me, Israel is sort of like a litmus paper, a litmus test to the spiritual state of the church if they don't have the love for Israel or if they suggest that Israel doesn't need Christ, both of them are in the wrong place spiritually. And and that produces, of course, way more deception later on in other areas. If you're wrong with Israel, and Israel is such a central part in God's Word, then you must be wrong in so many other things. But Jack, and you travel in the world of pastors all the time, and yeah. so many are closed to the things, and we open the program talking about this. They're closed to the things we're talking about. If they're not in to replacement theology. They've got sort of an edge against Israel. They've been influenced by this Christian power. 
Palestinianism issue, and I don't want to call that nonsense, but uh, Christian Palestinianism replacing the biblical exhortation that Jews are God's chosen people and that they have a covenant land. How do you address some of those pastors? Yeah, exactly like this. First of all, Jan, you'll maybe, maybe not, you'll find interesting to note that when you talk to a pastor and you start to detect that this guy may be a replacement theology embracer, you know, when you begin to press them on that, they'll deny that they are replacement theology people. They just deny it. They'll say, I know I'm not. But then when you listen to them, they actually are in practice. So there's two things happening. There's, there's one thing being said, which I believe is a form of deception. There's one thing being said, but their ministry and their, their church lifestyle betrays Israel. When you betray Israel, as Amir just said, you are betraying the God mm-hmm. of Israel, who made the promises to Israel. Listen, all of you out there who are non-Jews, Gentiles like me, if the God of Israel does not keep his covenantal That's promises right. to the nation of Israel, you are not going to heaven. Listen, Christian, if you believe that God will not keep his promises, to Israel, then you have no promises. You have no promises of eternal life. You have no promise of forgiveness. You have no promise of going to heaven by Jesus, because he will keep his promise to Israel. That's how we get grafted in, because he is the the God that keeps his promises. If he fails to keep his promises given to Israel, then you have no assurance of ever seeing heaven yourself. That's how vital this is. So pastors are teaching a replacement theology that they say is not. They have spiritualized scripture, and I'll leave, it, I'll leave this with you, Jan. Every Bible prophecy that has been fulfilled thus far has been fulfilled literally. That means the remainder of Bible prophecy, we can clearly That's conclude right. that God will fulfill it literally. God will fulfill it.